President President Roosevelt not only practiced judo in the White House, he also became America's first brown belt, and it was an accomplishment in the combined history of world leaders and martial arts, not surpassed until a century later when Russian President Vladimir Putin advanced to the level of six-degree black belt. Putin's known for his vicious sweeping hip throw, by the way, of course. Roosevelt wasn't exactly shy about his hobby. <clears throat> he lined he lined the White House basement with training mats and he practiced with anyone who was willing to tussle, including his wife and sister-in-law. Once he even brightened a boring state luncheon by throwing the Swiss minister to the floor and demonstrating a judo hole to the delight of his guests. Was the typical behavior from the 26th president? Absolutely. Teddy loved a good fight, both literally and metaphorically. Just as he wasn't afraid to spar with boxing champion John L. Sullivan in the White House gym, he wasn't scared to take on big business in America either, though a capitalist at heart, Roosevelt believed the trust being formed by a few powerful banks, notably J.P. Morgan's First National Citibank, were hurting American competition. To fight back, he enforced the, the Chairman Antitrust Act of 1890, thereby sticking it to giant corporations like Standard Oil, the American Tobacco Company, and DuPont. Although he didn't intend to become the trust buster, Roosevelt did see the need to protect business from its own excesses. He passed the first workers' compensation bill to cover federal employees and pushed for more stringent child labor laws. Those measures made him enormously popular with the American public, and that image was only bolstered after he went hunting in Mississippi and refused to shoot a black cub. The story became, became so beloved that stop bears were soon named after him. <clears throat> Roosevelt's presidency was an old fluff, though. When it came to foreign policy, Teddy followed the proverb, speak softly and carry a big stick. After the United States won the Spanish-American War in 1898, former, former Spanish colonies were up for grabs. <clears throat> the United States had a choice, gobble them up or promote independence and self-determination. Roosevelt opted for the former feeling that it was the white man's burden to bring order to these lands. Sí.